so apparently there is a a big uh brouhaha that started to uh started to kind of simmer a little bit between the establishment Democrats and the Justice Democrats. So the Justice Democrats, for those of you that don't know, is the group that was started by Cenk Uger, Kyle Kalinske, and uh, a couple of other former Bernie Sanders, um, Bernie Sanders operatives. So this is a group that um, is basically pushing for every... So every politician or candidate, essentially, so and so because there's a bunch of politicians, like, like a few politicians that are currently in office that you know that were already in office, and they decided to join the Justice Democrats, um, and then there's also candidates like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Ilhan Omar and a couple of others. Ayanna Presley is another one that are um, candidates that that were elected recently, but they were but they were running as justice democrats leading up to their election and they won their election under the justice democrats banner and essentially what these um what justice democrats pushes for and what the they expect of their candidates and their you know and the people that are in those you know currently in those seats is to maintain the status quo of medicare for all free college uh you know a living wage ending the wars, anything, any kind of progressive um, value or progressive idea they are pushing for. And they make sure that um, that they're, that those specific, you know, candidates and uh, politicians keep pushing for them and they, keep, they hold them to that. And then those politicians and candidates also hold the people that they're challenging in, like, primaries, which they run in primaries, obviously. They challenge those uh, politicians to follow those, um, those kind of, you know, those kind of, policies and those ideas and if they don't then they get primaried so they're pretty much in danger if they don't support medicare for all free college ending the wars living wage all the stuff you know all the stuff i mentioned so there so as i said there was a there was a brouhaha and there was a little bit of a uh you know a thing uh, thing that went down between those two sides between the establishment democrats and justice democrats and it was profiled in a piece by politico so the title of the article is do not tweet in quotes pelosi scolds uh, progressives in closed door meeting and the sub headline says the house speaker urged liberal democrats not to criticize their centrist colleagues in public so basically on social media and i guess in speeches and stuff so obviously that's what she meant by do not tweet um so and so basically Pelosi lobbed she lobbed her threat you know from the kind of from the outset and I'm going to read you some of the parts here that details um, exactly what her threats were so it says speaker Nancy Pelosi shided progressives in a closed door meeting Wednesday calling on them to address their intra-party grievances privately rather than blasting their centrist colleagues on Twitter um, Pelosi's comments, which were described as stern, came during the first full caucus meeting since a major blow-up over emergency board funding last month between progressive and moderate lawmakers, as well as a recent spat with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of New York, and her freshman allies. So again, you got a complaint. This is quoting uh, Pelosi. So, you, uh, so again, you got a complaint. You come and talk to me about it. Pelosi told Democrats, according to a source in the room, quoting her again, but do not tweet about our members and expect us to think that this and, and to think that that is just OK. Democrats in the room said they interpreted that remark in part as a shot at Representative Mark Pocan of Wisconsin and co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, who called moderate Democrats members of the, quote, child abuse caucus in a tweet over their support for the Senate's version of the emergency humanitarian package. Pelosi also indirectly criticized uh, uh, Ocasio Cortez's chief of staff, chief of staff, according to Democrats in the room, as she told members to tell their staffers to quote think twice before they tweet. Saikat Chakrabarti, Ocasio Cortez's chief of staff, went after Pelosi in a series of tweets over the weekend, criticizing everything from her comments on the squad to her stance. 
uh, against imp impeachment. Chakrabarti also tweeted scathing criticism of the blue dog blue dogs, which is the blue, blue dog Democrats, calling them the new the new Southern Democrats. Quoting Chakrabarti here, it says they certainly seem hell bent to do black and brown people today what the old Southern Democrats did in the 1940s. Chakrabarti wrote on Twitter before deleting the post. Her remarks also come after Pelosi dismissed Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the other members of the Progressive Squad in an interview with the New York Times over the weekend. Pelosi questioned the group's actual influence given that its members were the only four Democrats who opposed the House's original humanitarian package. Ocasio-Cortez and the other progressives, Representatives Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts quickly fired back, criticizing uh, Pelosi's remarks in a series of tweets. So this is the part of the article where it profiles the progressives, those progressives fighting back. So it says, some of the moderates who felt targeted by Pocan's tweet also spoke up in the caucus meeting, including Abigail Spanberger of Virginia, who belongs to the Problem Solvers Caucus that Pocan, uh, that Pocan derided as child abusers, as a former federal law enforcement agent who focused on tra child trafficking, Spanberger said she was horrified that a uh, she was horrified that a fellow Democrat would compare members of his own party to child abusers, according to multiple people in the room. Speaking to reporters later Wednesday, Polkan did not back away from his criticism of the bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, which had taken credit for helping scrap the House's more liberal version of a humanitarian border package last month. Quoting Pocan here, it says, I know there are some people in the Problem Solvers Caucus that are that feel a little stung because they got yelled at last weekend, last weekend by constituents. Pocan said, referring to recent town hall meetings held by moderates in their districts. I understand why they're upset, but they should they should be upset because they got in trouble last week. Um... And then this is uh, this is kind of profiling why the uh, Democrats buckled. So it says Pelosi's speech is a part of an effort by Democratic leaders to knit the party back together after the bitter border funding fight last month. Shortly before the fourth, uh, the July fourth recess, moderate Democrats moved to block further consideration of the House border bill, which had additional protections for mig migrant children. After it became clear the GOP-controlled Senate would not take it up, Pelosi bowed to centrists and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell agreeing to put the Senate bill on the floor and leaving progressives fuming. And then um, here it profiles how one of the members of Congress is pr uh, was preaching unity. So it says House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Democrat of Maryland, also delivered a forceful speech on Wednesday, preaching unity within the caucus and urging members to speak directly with each other rather than publicly. A sentiment that lawmakers privately mused could ha also have been directed at Pelosi after a critique of the caucus's freshman firebrands. And um, and then there's a last part here where it um, talks about it's the last you know short little paragraph here talking about how the progressives uh, revolt, and it says some progressive members had private pri privately discussed not paying dues to the caucus's fundraising arm earlier this year after officials announced contentious new policies that made it tougher for primary primary challengers to attract talented consultants. So this is a very interesting um, little feud going on here, and I I think it's a long time coming. This is something that should have happened, honestly, from the very beginning. You know, as far as the as far as the the kind of progressive wing of the Democratic Party, which to be fair isn't very big, but it's still very influential. They should have gone after Pelosi a hell of a lot harder. Now to the credit of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, she did, for example, after she was um elected she was elected and won her race in um in, in Queens and, and the Bronx. She went to Nancy Pelosi's office 
with a bunch of members of the Sunrise Movement. Now, this is the Sunrise Movement is a group that's headed by, I believe it's a bunch of women who are um, fighting against the effects of climate change. So they're pushing for the most progressive climate change uh, legislation possible, and they go to you know the, the offices the offices of random, you know, Democrat. Not not too many. I don't think they've gone to a lot of Republican Republican Party politicians offices but they definitely go to a lot of democratic policy politicians offices and they demand that these politicians um vote better on legislation that is going to help you know hopefully you know reverse climate change now the reason why they don't go to the Re republican party uh, politicians offices is because they know that a lot of those republicans are going to be against no uh against um they're going to be against reversing climate change and you know do, you know, at least doing something to avoid it because they already are bought out by the oil industry and, you know, any kind of, you know, any industry that's going to basically fuck up the, you know, environment. And they don't even bother with the Republicans, and I don't blame them. Now, when it comes to the Democrats, there's a possibility that you can sway them, you can tell them, you know, listen, this is a, you know, for example, you're, I think they went to the office of Dianne Feinstein one time, you know, California is a big state, you want to go in there, you want to stop fracking, you want to stop, you know, oil drilling and all that stuff. I've gone, you know, I live in California, and I've gone through different parts of the of the state where I've seen oil drilling, and I've seen fracking happening. And that's something that can be stopped. In fact, I remember um, uh, when I, so like the old, the old neighborhood that I grew up in when I was little was in LA. It was in the, the valley part, the valley area of LA, and it was in Northridge. And I lived there for about, I would say roughly 10 years of my life, I would say. And when, so when I left, Years later, and then I left, and I moved to the Bay Area up north, uh, uh, up north in Northern California. Um, later on, um, my mom told me that they started doing fracking. They started doing fracking in that that area, that specific area of New York, of not New York, Northridge, and they, you know, they were fracking, and it was causing a lot of environmental problems. So this is something, and and that angered me, you know. And this is so this is something I totally understand. Like I said, I've seen it happen, you know, just like the example I just gave regarding Northridge. I've seen it when traveling through California, going between Northern California and Southern California by car. So this kind of stuff, when it comes to the whole, you know, the whole kind of you know, oil drilling, you know, you know, digging, digging for oil as much as possible. That kind of stuff is happening all over the country. But when it's happening in your own state, in your own areas, and you know, where you, where you used to live, or maybe even where you do live, it's something that really angers you and you want to speak out against it. So, but when it comes to these politicians, they don't, they're so comfortable in their seats, in their well, in their in their positions, in their you know their seats in Congress or seats in the Senate, wherever they are, let alone the president and all that stuff. But they are so comfortable where they are; they don't get challenged by anybody. Nobody come calls them out for anything. Nobody says, you know, this is what you should do to represent your constituents because they're too beholden to their donors. So finally, somebody is calling them out, and you know, Pelosi is getting pissed off that they're doing it publicly. Oh my God, God forbid, you know, you call us out publicly and you you tweet about it, and it, you know, this is all about like the Democrats trying to avoid having any kind of issues that's going to affect. 2020 when trump has you know trump has to obviously run against whoever the democrat is and obviously they don't want the democrat to be bernie sanders which if it does end up being bernie sanders they're going to have to back him um they're going to have to support him as the candidate ultimately but you know let's just say if it's going to be somebody like you know kamal harris or cory booker or you know pete booty judge or, or whoever even elizabeth warren these are candidates that a lot of progressives that don't want to support majority of progressives and i'd say like 80 90 percent of progressives they don't want to support those people even you know at least so that becomes a problem for democrats who have to go out there and they have to play you know they basically have to you know play damage control and they know that they definitely know that 
this these progressives in the caucus in the democratic caucus like ocasio cortez and ilan omar and all these people these they are backed by justice democrats and they're making big demands and they're making revolutionary demands that it's going to have a huge effect on the you know the direction of the party and the direction of the country really and they're scared of it they can't they're they're scared of that these you know so-called you know these so-called you know pure you know purists you know politicians and, and you know democrats progressives or whatever that that have purity tests god forbid that's apparently a terrible thing nowadays and they hate that they have that so they have to you know nip that in the bud and make sure there is no purity in the party you can't you know god forbid you stand up for something you know too too hard and they want to avoid that you know they want to avoid that disaster as much as possible so it's very very good to see that nancy pelosi is scared it's very good to see that she um is well I'm, I'm definitely not happy that she's taking you know trying to take control and trying to appease progressives because she's ultimately just doing whatever her donors tell her what to do and what her um her democratic strategist ultimately her intention is just to you know, kind of throw a bone to progressives and be nice to them and then uh, eventually stab them in the back. Because as I, you know, as it was mentioned in the article, there was a um, New York Times profile that was done um, where they basically did like an interview with Nancy Pelosi. And, you know, so and, I, and I'll post the, the, the link in the description. You can check out the check out the article from the New York Times. But they, you know, basically, you know, they, they're talking to her and Pelosi tells them, oh, yeah, these um, four, uh, you know, four women that are in the, you know, in the Democratic Party. And, then you know, they were just newly, you know, elected and brought into brought into Congress. Don't worry about them. They're not that big of a deal you know don't don't let them get to you too you know they, you know don't let them get too much attention they don't get to other democrats they're just four people who cares and that's referring to ocasio cortez ilhan omar ayana presley um and uh who's the other one <laughs> i lost track of who the other one was um it is uh right yeah rashida talib i'm sorry so rashida talib is uh from Michigan, Ilhan Omar is from Minnesota. Ayanna Presley is from Massachusetts, and I said, and as I said, Ocasio Cortez is from New York. And those four are being a thorn in the side to um, Nancy Pelosi, and she's going out there and she's kind of, you know, she's going like this, you know, she's like, ah, who cares? You know, I don't, they're not important. Who cares about them? You know, they're just four women. Their votes don't mean anything. They're just, they don't represent the party. Blah blah blah. So they're, you know, she's just shrugging them aside. She's, you know, just kind of flicking at them, making sure they get out of the way because they, you know, she causes problems for them essentially, causes problems for her and for them in the in the sense of the establishment democrats basically and she wants to get them out of the way as soon as possible before things get any worse because she knows things are definitely going to get worse so this is definitely one of those situations that progressives need to use this and i'm going to be doing a story in in the next segment which is going to it's going to get me very very angry talking about it but this is a situation where progressives have to hold their hold their 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 ground they need to you know stand up for themselves don't let these democrats bully them don't let them appease them because there was a you know uh, there's this picture of uh this profile on well, i forgot what it was rolling stone esquire or something it was some sort of magazine cover where the um it was it was a picture of pelosi ocasio cortez ilhan omar and i think ayanna presley maybe it was Tlaib. maybe it was rashida Tlaib. i'm not sure but these four, you know, or three justice Democrats with Pelosi took this picture where essentially Pelosi appeased them and, you know, wanted to present herself with these, you know, women of color, one black woman, one Somalian woman, and one um, Hispanic woman, and all young women too. And she wanted to portray herself as look at this i'm a white i'm a rich white woman i'm taking a picture put and putting it on the cover of the of this whatever magazine it is and look how nice i am to them and so now they you know now you know in her mind she you know they better kiss my ass now that i'm giving them you know all this attention and i'm going on a you know magazine cover with them laughing like ah, you know we're so happy we're so best friends and 
honestly, this is, and this is something Kyle, Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk talked about. They should have never, never done that. They should have never done that um, magazine cover. I th I'm sure there was an article with it, too, where they're talking about, oh, we're going to work together and shit. I haven't read it, so I don't know. But I'm sure they did that, too. But, the, you know, like Kyle said, they should have never done that because all it did is made Pelosi look good. And it gave her this, you know, gave this kind of this reputation of being like, oh, I'm so, you know, I'm so inclusive and I'm in favor of letting, you know, women of color into my into my little circle of trust and making sure they're, they're taking care of in reality she doesn't give a shit about them she doesn't give a shit about you know their demands whether you know no matter what they're demanding for progressive their progressive policies and stuff pelosi doesn't want to do shit about that because she's the leader and she's the speaker of the house and she wants to do what she wants to do and that's you know fulfilling the demands of her donors that's all she cares about and if you dare you know if you dare stray away from that then she knows what the consequences will be and it'll basically be financial it may not be political, but it's, you know, it, it, you know, especially considering she's from San Francisco, but it's going to be much more financial than political because I guarantee you majority of the people in San Francisco are, are going to support all those progressive policies, uh, let alone the state of California. People in the state of California are going to support progressive policies, but not if, not if Pelosi is going out there and saying, no, we need to do something more pragmatic, then they're going to just back whatever she says which is just shows how stupid some people are. They just want to be part of a team and they want to be, you know, following along with that instead of doing what's, uh, you know, good for the country.